Hello, everyone. Uh, this is going to be the uh, lecture for section 2.4, the study of continuity. So uh, in section 2.2, uh, we got a good intuitive definition of a limit. Uh, in section 2.3, we got to work a little bit more on the limit, uh, figured out some laws for the limit, um, and then built up a little bit more uh, a deeper theory for uh, limits. Now we're going to do continuity, and uh, uh, it requires the definition of a limit, and uh, it gives us sort of a property for functions that we can use much later. Uh, and it gives us a uh, if we can sort of define uh, functions to be continuous. Lots of nice stuff happens, as we're going to see in uh, chapter three when we get there. Okay. Um, so first of all, I want to go ahead and define what a function being continuous is. So a function is continuous at a point x equal a if and only if the following three conditions are satisfied. Null three have to be satisfied. That f of a, first of all, is defined. Okay. That if I plug in a uh, into my function f, that it actually produces a valid number, not a does not exist or an undefined value. Okay, uh, number two, that the limit as x approaches a of f of x also must exist. Okay, that means that the limit from the left and the limit from the right uh, have to be equal and they have to match up, right? And then the last bit, the last condition is that the limit uh, as x approaches a of f of x has to equal the function value uh, at a. That's basically it. So basically what we're saying is this, that this has to exist, this has to exist, and both of these have to be equal. Okay. If all three of these conditions uh, are satisfied, then we have a function that is considered continuous. Okay. Uh, it is discontinuous if it fails one of these three. Okay. So like I said, I'd like pictures. Okay, so let's say you had a function f. Okay, whoa, went too far there. There we go. So let's say this is my function f of x. Okay, and let's say we want to find that it is continuous at a function at a point right here, x equal a. Okay, so. Notice that this function is defined. So this, the height of this uh, value right here is actually f of a, okay? So our, our function at x equal a is defined. That's uh, the first condition. The second condition is that if I approach the left and the right, they actually head to that point. OK? And that point is going to give us the value L, if you guys remember from uh, our previous section, All right? So notice for this function, OK, that the function value at x equal a is equal to its limit. If that happens, then we have a continuous function at x equal a, OK? So these are the three conditions for continuity at a point x equal a, OK? Uh, and it's great if we want to actually be uh, sort of uh, by the textbook about it, OK? Um, but that's not always going to be the case. Uh, when we want to determine, some, uh, to determine if something is continuous, OK? What uh, what you'll hear being said, you know, over and over, is the following statement right here: that a function is continuous if you can draw the function without lifting your pencil. So if you can do this with a function, this is a perfectly good working definition uh, for continuity. Okay. Uh, if you want to prove uh, prove discontinuity, so if you want to prove that something is not continuous, then you're going to have to go back to the definition the three conditions, OK? So let me explain how this works, OK? So let's go ahead and do this first example right here, OK? So again, uh, 
you guys uh, should remember this from uh, pre-calc. This is going to be that double swoosh. OK. Uh, uh, there's going to be an asymptote at uh, negative 2. And there's going to be another one at 3. OK. And uh, since there is no negative, uh, it's just going to be good old double swoosh. It's going to go like this right here. Whoa. It's hard to draw these that way. And then there's this one that goes through here and down that way. There we go. So there's the graph for this function right here. OK. So show that f of x is continuous at negative 1. OK. So then that means that we have to prove right, all three of those conditions from above. OK. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just find f of negative 1. OK. Notice negative 1, there is no problem with me plugging it in. Right? It's actually in the domain. So I can do 1 over minus 1 plus 2 plus 3. So it's going to be 1 over 1 plus 3, 4, or great. OK? And if we go ahead and just take a look at the graph, uh, if we want to find the limit as x approaches a, OK, of f of x, we can see that this is also going to be 4, because we want to approach this point right here. OK? Since both of these are equal, right, then we can conclude that f of x that f of x is continuous at x equal negative 1. That's simple, OK? So now let's go ahead and try to show discontinuity, OK? And we're going to try to show it at x equal negative 2, OK? So now notice we do have a problem with, with plugging it in at negative 2, OK? Uh, if we plug in, we go ahead and do f of negative 2, that is equal to does not exist, right? And furthermore, if we do the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the positive of f of x, OK, if you guys recall from a previous section, this one skyrockets. This one shoots upward. So this is positive infinity. And the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the negative of f of x, that is negative infinity. That one takes a nosedive, right? Since these two are not equal, OK, then the flat limit does not exist, the good old regular limit. Uh, negative 2 of f of x okay if you go back and look at our definition uh, all three of these had to exist since none of them exist we've just shown uh, that our function is discontinuous at x equal negative 2 f of x is discontinuous. OK, so like I said, it's usually easy to prove that something is continuous. Um, you can use the working definition uh, just to verify uh, sort of uh, on the fly. Uh, if you need to actually dis um, you actually need to uh, prove that something is continuous or discontinuous, you have to go back to the definition, the three conditions. Okay. 
So this one was a little simple, okay? Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at a much harder one. So this one's a piecewise function, if you guys remember how those work, okay? So the piecewise functions work like this, right? So this first one is this strip right here, only up to negative two, okay? Uh, let me zoom out a bit because it's missing a point. There we go. Okay. The next one, the blue, is this point, just this point down here. Okay. The next one is that little strip that goes up like that. Okay. And then the last bit is just this swoosh that happens right here. Okay. So now that we know what this function looks like, okay, uh, let's go ahead and let's move down to the problems. Okay, so we're going to first justify each discontinuity. Okay, so I want to define each discontinuity. And there's two spots where our function is discontinuous. Those two spots are right here at x equal negative two and at x equal zero, okay? So let's go ahead, I'm gonna use, like I said, the definition to precisely justify each discontinuity, okay? So let's go ahead and start with uh, x equal, whoa. let's go ahead and start with x equal negative two. So we need to, <clears throat> verify um, the three conditions, right? So let's go ahead and start. So let's do f of negative two, okay? We get to see from here that f of negative two from the definition of the function up above is equivalent to negative two, right? So negative two uh, by definition, a function, right? Okay. Now we're going to do the limit as x approaches uh, negative two of f of x. Okay. So this is where we're going to use our graph from above to determine the limit. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and do it numerically, like we've been doing in section 2.2 and 2.3. Uh, but to sort of save ourselves a little bit of time, I'm just going to go ahead and use the graph, OK? If we approach it from the negative side, we, sorry, if we approach it from the positive side, this direction right here, we see it's going somewhere. And if we approach it from the negative side, we also see it's going somewhere. Specifically, it looks like it's going to zero, and that's exactly right. Okay. But we have everything we need at this point. So automatically, we can see that the function value is not equal to its limit. You guys see that? It's not equal to its limit. So uh, f of x is discontinuous at x equal negative 2. So notice this one, the limit does exist. It's just not equal to the function at that point. OK? The next point that we need to now double check is this point right here at x equal zero. This one's a little easier. So x equals zero, okay? So let's first of all, f of zero. We have to find the function value, okay? Looking at our function itself, we get to plug that into uh, the third one, okay? So that means that it's going to be uh, negative zero squared plus four is equal to four. Right? 
Now let's find the other thing, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. OK? Let's go ahead and do the two. Let's go ahead and do the positive one first. And then the, lim the negative one, limit as x approaches 0, the negative of f of x. OK? If we look at the graph, the positive one goes to infinity, and then the negative one goes to 4. So this one goes to infinity, and this one goes to 4. So we're looking at these, uh, these four values right here, OK? Three values, three values, OK? Because of these two, we can determine that the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x, right? This is equal to what does not exist. It does not exist. OK. So now let's compare these two right here now. Let me get rid of that. Get rid of that. I'm going to rewrite them really quick. Uh, infinity and 4. Now we get to look at these two. So remember the definition of a limit to prove continuity is to show that the limit of a function is equal to its function value, OK? The function value at x equals 0 is 4. The limit as x approaches 0 of f of x does not exist. So using those two facts alone, we can prove f of x is discontinuous at x equals 0, OK? So notice that for both of these discontinuities, uh, it violated one of the three conditions somehow, some way, OK? So so long as you check uh, all three, if it is continuous, it'll show you. If it isn't continuous, it'll show you, OK? The last thing uh, that I'd want to do here is uh, for part C is on what intervals is f of x continuous? Uh, and it basically works the same way as if you remember how to do a, um, a domain. We find all the points that are discontinuous and kick those out. Everything else is good. OK? The only two points where uh, f of x is discontinuous, we prove them in part b, is at x equal negative 2 and at x equals 0. So I can go ahead and summarize. For part C, uh, f of x is continuous over negative infinity to negative 2, union 2 to 0, negative 2 to 0, union 0 to infinity. OK? So now, real quick. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the graph one more time. Let's go ahead and use that working definition. Uh, the, uh, a function is continuous if you can draw it without lifting your pencil. Okay. So if we take a look, I'm going to use my highlighter in this case. Okay. If I wanted to draw this, right, this whole entire strip I can draw without moving my pencil, without lifting my pencil, right, until I get to this spot right here because I need to draw in this point down here. Notice how I lifted my pencil to do so, OK? And then the other strip, this bit, I didn't have to lift my pencil to draw that section either until I got to this point right here, right? And then the very last strip, the one the swoosh that goes to the right there, that whole strip I was able to draw without lifting my pencil until I got closer and closer to this point. So uh, as a sort of like a what I want to say, like a quick and dirty way of figuring out continuity, OK, uh, you can always use that uh, lift, uh, draw without lifting your pencil. That's always great. If you need to need to prove it using the definition, you got to go through the three conditions. OK. All right, let me zoom in a little bit. OK. So in general. There are three different types 
of discontinuities. Okay, there's a removable discontinuity, a jump discontinuity, or an infinite discontinuity. Okay, uh, these three definitions, depending on what book you're looking at, um, they might change. I'm going to be using the definition that's provided in the textbook for this class, uh, the OpenStax textbook. Okay, so a removable discontinuity is essentially like the one that we saw in section 2.2 at the very beginning of the semester, that we had sort of like a straight line, it had a hole, and then kept going, okay? That's exactly what a removal discontinuity is. It is a hole, okay? The jump discontinuity is exactly how it sounds. You're jumping somehow. so. Uh, a graph that does something like this. Uh, ooh, there we go. That continues, hits something, and then sort of jumps to another spot, right? Or one that has like a hole, but is defined somewhere else, something like this. Both of these are considered jump discontinuities, okay? Where you're basically having to lift up your pencil, jump somewhere else on the graph to draw it, and then continue on, okay? And then the last one, it's one that you probably, it, it should make sense already, an infinite discontinuity. Basically, if uh, either end of the graph is going, you know, it's either, you know, skyrocketing or taking a nosedive. So something that looks something like this, right? So then that drops like this and then continues on, right? Or something that sort of, we've seen these before, that have sort of like a split like this, okay? Both of these are considered infinite discontinuities, okay? Uh, and just as a definition, we know what it is to be con continuous at a point. Those are our three conditions, right? A function is continuous uh, on an interval a, b, okay? If it is continuous at every number in that interval, okay? And that's simple, okay? Uh, Next up is our quick checks. Like I said, just do the one that's assigned to you uh, and your group mates through the discussion. Make sure you post the solution. Uh, if you want to submit pictures, that's great. If you want to submit write-ups, that's great. Uh, anything I can use, I'll put it up as uh, solutions for this so we can get like a good robust set of uh, solutions for the notes. So I'm going to go ahead and move on uh, to a couple more theorems. Okay. Uh, the first one is basically uh, if you combine uh, continuous functions, okay? So suppose you have two functions, f and g, at a point x equal a, okay? And let's take c as a constant number, uh, as a multiplier, okay? Then all of these, the sum or the difference, the product, the division, or a function times a value are all also continuous, okay? It doesn't matter what f and g are, so long as they're both continuous, then all of these other combinations are also going to be continuous, okay? An additional theorem that is not in the book, but I think it should be, uh, for the following functions, you do not have to prove their continuity, Okay, uh, you can go ahead and take it uh, as the theorem states. Any of the trigonometric functions, so sine, cosine, tangent, uh, polynomial functions, exponential functions, so anything a times b to the x, and logarithmic functions are all continuous over their entire domains. Okay. Uh, this will become really useful uh, in a second when we get to one, uh, our last example for the section, okay? Uh, next one, next theorem, okay? Suppose you have a function f of x that is continuous at L and the limit as x approaches A of g of x is equal to L. Then the limit of the composition of f and g is equal to f times the limit of g of x, which is equal to f of l. 
I know that sounds complicated. It's got a lot of letters, so I like pictures. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and draw out this one. OK, this one basically says that let's say you had a function, right? So here's the g of x. And we wanted, let me take those back. I like to use green for, there we go. Okay. We're looking at this point right here. We know that this is the limit for this thing is L, right? Okay. And suppose we had a different function. Now, let's say this is f of x, right? And we take this as its input. So let's say this is my value L, right? Then this function has to be F of L. Okay. This is a very important theorem for the following statement that comes right below. That suppose you have f and g, both of which are continuous on their own, then the composition of two co uh, continuous functions is also going to be continuous. Okay. Okay. This last theorem is one of the most important ones in the study of calculus. It actually. Uh, allows us to prove much harder uh, things in higher math, okay? And it's the intermediate value theorem, okay? So let me read it out first. Suppose that F is continuous on a closed interval, A, B, and let N be any number between F of A and F of B, where F of A is not equal to F of B. Then there exists a number, C, in A, B, such that f of c is equal to n, OK? So what this theorem states is that suppose we had a continuous function between a and b, OK? Uh, the function is going to provide uh, y values that bound the outputs, OK? Then we are guaranteed a c value such that any number between f of a and f of b has a number c, an x value c, that maps to it, OK? So like I said, I like pictures. So suppose we had a function. Here's my function f of x. Notice that f of x is continuous. And I am going to choose my a and my b, OK? Notice that these two values exist here. So this is f of a, and this value over here is f of b. Okay. So for a function, for a continuous function, if we choose a value A, the output's going to be F of A. If we choose a value B, the output's going to be F of B. OK? Then according to the intermediate value theorem, OK, we can choose any value between F of A and F of B. OK? So I'm going to go ahead and choose this number right here. Let me actually. Make it a wacko one. Let's go ahead and not make it in the middle, but make it somewhere not in the middle. So let's say I choose that value right there, n. OK? Then according to the intermediate value theorem, I am guaranteed a value in between a and b such that f of c 
is equal to that value n. So I am guaranteed this value down here by the intermediate values here, okay? If I wanted to choose any value n between f a and f of b, then I'm guaranteed that value c on the x-axis that maps to n under f. So you're probably asking yourself, why? Why is that so important? It's actually pretty important when, uh, I mean, again, this is an overly simplified uh, a usage of the intermediate value theorem, but it's still powerful nonetheless. So I'm going to use the intermediate value theorem to show that our function f of x is equal to 2 cosine of x, x minus 3x has a root in the closed interval 0, 1. OK? So the first thing I'm going to do, number one, I'm going to have to satisfy, let me scroll up a little bit. There we go. I'm going to satisfy the conditions for intermediate value theorem. So first of all, uh, number one, uh, we have to prove that f is continuous, right? f of x is equal to 2 times cosine of x minus 3 of x. So let's go ahead and start this. From the previous theorem, from a previous theorem in the same section, uh, we know that all trig functions are continuous. So cosine must be continuous. Since cosine is continuous and two is just a number, two times cosine of x is also continuous. Okay, and then minus three x, uh, that's considered a polynomial function from the same theorem. We can conclude that this is continuous. So then therefore, the combination of everything is continuous. So we have that f of x is continuous. So we proved the very first part that uh, f of x is continuous uh, over 0, 1. Okay. So now the next thing we need to do is uh, prove that it has the root. Okay. And this one's going to be pretty cool. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and the second step here. Okay, is I'm going to do f of zero. That is going to be two cosine of zero minus three times zero. Uh, cosine of zero, that is one, and then three times zero is zero. So this is going to be uh, two. f of one is two cosine of one minus three times one. And this is equal to negative 1.00, let me write it in a new line here down here, a negative 1.00, Zero three zero oh, four six one. Okay. So all I did was plugged in our endpoints for our interval. And we got these two values. So now you're probably asking yourself, why did we do that? What, how is that going to help us? So the next thing I'm going to draw is this I'm going to draw a xy axis. And this is going to be 0. This is going to be 1. OK? I want everybody to look at what's happening here. OK? Uh, at 0, our function is equal to 2. So 1, 2. Our point's up there. 
okay? At one, it's equal to negative 1.00 and change, right? So this is gonna be negative one right here. This is gonna be two. At, at x equal one, the function value is negative uh, 1.0030461, right? So our function starts off up here and ends down here. The last thing we have to notice, like I said, uh, cont uh, continuous, right? We can go ahead and use our, uh, our working definition of continuity that we can draw the graph without lifting our pencil. So then that means that somehow, some way up here, this point has to go ahead and come down here somewhere, and connect to that other red point down here, okay? If it's continuous, it can't do that without crossing the x-axis, hence the reason we have a root. Do we know what the root is? No. But we are guaranteed that it does have one by the intermediate value theorem. Okay? So there is the proof. Using the intermediate value theorem uh, to determine that we have a root inside that closed interval. That is it. We are guaranteed that it does have one. We don't know what it is, but we are guaranteed that we have one, okay? And I believe that is it. Let your questions come up. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed this uh, yet, uh, you can use Desmos for a lot of this work. Uh, verify your work. You're more than welcome to verify your work using any graphing utility you have, whether it be a calculator on your phone, uh, whether it be a graphing calculator, or if it's Desmos or GeoGebra, Geo if you remember that from high school, any which way is perfectly fine, okay? Uh, if there are any questions, please come visit me at my, uh, at my Zoom room uh, during our uh, synchronous times, uh, and hopefully I'll see you there. <laughs>